Well, we just came out of what was about the coldest winter on record here in coastal Texas, and it's a great time for me to give you all an update on how the Signature Solar Solar Powered Mini Splits did heating this massive space. Let's take a look. So if this is the first video you're catching on the solar powered mini splits, the first video I did was an install of one of the two ton units and we went through and, and checked the current draw, ran it off panels exclusively and all that happy jazz and it worked pretty well. Well now I'm living in this space and it's, it's a fairly large space to be honest. Uh, the ceiling above me where I'm sitting is 25 feet high. So this was quite the challenge because as we all know hot air rises. So in the living side of the barn dominium, we have a total of three units, two one ton units in the bedrooms, living areas. And then we have one two ton unit for the big open space. Again, that's that's where I'm sitting right now for a total of four tons on this side. And we have two tons in the garage side. Now, one of the things that was really interesting in order for me to get the certificate of occupancy, every new building now requires something called a blower door test. And what a blower door test is, they basically put a fan in your front door and suck air out of the building and measure how many times the air changes over in an hour. And in my part of the country, you have to be under five. It scored around a three after I sealed up a bunch of leaks in what I term as the Great Wall of China to my right here. This wall over here took, well, if you count both sides, 3,000 square feet of drywall. It's, it's, it's a big wall. And there were a lot of leaks, particularly at the top, but those were all sealed up. We passed the blower door test and got the, the cert, so, so we're in good shape. But I did learn something from that. The garage side, which has three roll-up garage doors, and those are unsealed. Eventually, I'm going to put brush seals on those doors, but it's very, very difficult to keep that stuff under control because the turnover of airflow in there is so incredibly high. On this side of the Great Wall of China here, it's much more sealed and it's good, but there's something else I've learned too. So there are eight picture windows up high, which actually helped as far as solar gain is concerned. And it kept the living space a little bit warmer than the garage space. The garage has very few windows. It has just two three by three foot windows. And I did that for a reason. I wanted to control light in there, but the solar gain from these picture windows actually does keep it a bit warmer. We'll find out what that does as far as cooling is concerned, but we're here to talk about heating. So one of the things that I realized pretty quickly, I sat down, because this is me, I sat down with a calculator and did a test and found out that it costs approximately five times, it's like four to five times more expensive to run the generator to charge the battery banks as it would if I was just charging off of sort of municipal power. And while the barn dominium itself is off grid, it's truly off grid, this is a fairly large 10 acre property. And I do have a barn, you know, several, well, it's like 400 feet away from here, which does actually have municipal power. So I went and did something that unless you know what you're doing, please don't do it. But I gathered up all the heavy extension cords that I owned. It's all 10 and 12 gauge cords. And I happen to have just enough to make the run again it's about 400 feet from the barn to here and i converted them to 240 volts because you know there's voltage drop calculations you have to take into account and then i limited the power through the cables to 2000 watts plug that into the charge verter and that's what i was using to charge the batteries now that works out to our advantage because i can look at the power bill for the barn and i know what was plugged in and for how long and how much electricity the barn was using and i can look at the inverter data and find out how much power we were using in this building to figure out exactly how short i am in terms of solar power particularly for the winter in the summer i'm not that worried but because i only have Two arrays, if you looked at the solar panel direction video, I kind of go into detail. I've got one array that faces west and one that faces south. Eventually, I'll have two that face south. In fact, I was up on the roof today, but I only put in two panels because it was a bit windy and, you know, I don't want to be a statistic. But I've got six panels left to go, and then all 36 panels will be functional. That's three arrays of 12 panels each, two of which face south, and then the other two face west and they're originally designed to plug directly into the mini splits so we do know that works but what i did is i actually unplugged them from the mini splits and plugged them into the inverter because i needed 
all the power I could get to charge the batteries. And that's simply because in the winter, you're at a deficit. You know, the days are shorter. There's a lot more overcast days. The sun is lower. So there's less power output. So down here, the average low temperature for January and early February is like 47, 48 degrees. Well, we hit 21 degrees. In fact, one of the Moments of Roger videos shows Roger experiencing a frozen pond for the first time. I came out in the morning and I looked at the water and I'm like, it's not moving. It was frozen solid, which again, down here, that almost never happens. You know, they still talk about the great freeze from before I moved down here where it hit 32 degrees overnight and everybody freaked out. Well, we beat that. And then we also had a couple of other nights where it sort of hovered around freezing, like got down to 31, 32 degrees. So this, this is truly a great test. So let's take a look at the electric bill and we can break it out. So I know I was running a space heater in the barn. The barn has a second story that's finished out and it's kind of like a guest house or little in-law suite. And to be honest, that's where I was storing stuff, but that's also where I was staying when I was finishing up this building. But I did run a space heater in there because I do have some temperature sensitive things in there. And I was running it on medium, which on that space heater is about a thousand watts. And that makes the math really easy. But we can also figure that out from the inverter data. So if we take a look at the inverter data, you know, you can see that there have there were definitely a bunch of days where I used a lot more electricity than the panels were putting in. And I made up for that electricity by setting the charge verter to charge at about 30 amps, 35 amps, which is about a 2000 watt draw through that contraption of extension cords, which you could not do at 120 volts, particularly over that distance because the voltage drop would just be too great, even if the breaker would have handled it. So I used a 50 amp, 240 volt circuit in the barn to do this. Again, please, if you don't know what you're doing, don't, don't do that. It, it's, it's frankly not the safest thing in the world. What I may end up doing ultimately is getting some direct burial cable because again, you're never really gonna, you don't have to power everything here with it. All you have to do is be able to put in enough energy into the battery banks to make up whatever deficit you have. And it's it's cheaper and easier and I still have the generators to, to charge the batteries if I need to, but this just makes life so much easier. And it also makes the data easier to track because you know I'm not really keeping track of how many gallons of gas I'm putting into the generators or anything along those lines. But if we look at the inverter data, we used about 300 kilowatt hours to heat this whole space. So this whole space, if you count it as a two story area, is the equivalent of it's the equivalent volume of about an 8,000 square foot house. Now the garage I wasn't that much worried about, but I did you know run the heat in there as well, obviously because well frankly I could. And in the living space, the ceilings are eight feet high, and the bedrooms have the one ton units in them, so it was it was pretty easy to regulate the heat in there, especially since you know the building itself is insulated with R10 all around. But the living space with the eight foot high ceilings, those walls are separately insulated with R13. So you effectively have R23 in there. I know that no matter what happens, the bedrooms, bathrooms and all that will be comfortable year round very easily. It doesn't take much to run those things. Oh, and I did want to mention before we take a deep dive into the numbers that these units did come from Signature Solar and I, I did pay for them. I paid for the whole solar setup. But once we did that video, Signature Solar was kind enough to give me a discount code and a link where you can save a few bucks. And, you know, the link is down in the description below if you're interested in doing this for yourself and frankly, saving a ton of money, you know, check out that link. So to put it in perspective, the 300 kilowatt hours that I had to use municipal power for, and again, you could have used a, a generator because it's all going through the charge verter anyway. I did a video on the charge verter that uh, you can check out, but it costs less than 40 bucks in total for the whole month to heat this. Less than 40 bucks. If you want to be precise, it costs $38.70. So yeah, these things work really well. And of course, we're going to find out what happens in the summertime because, you know, it doesn't really hit 100 degrees here. It comes very close, but it comes very close a lot, like 97, 96, a lot of days like that. And that's in the shade. You know, in that other video where I first installed the thing, I was putting thermometers outside like in direct sun and I saw over 120 degrees frequently. 
So that's going to be a test, but somehow I think it's not going to be nearly as trying as the heat side of things. Obviously, where you live, it could be different. But, you know, I just wanted to report these things are working just fine. There's a link in the description below to save a few bucks if you want to get one on your own. And the reason, by the way, I keep looking up there is because there's a two ton unit right there. And I just, you know, I'm talking about it. So I want to look at it. It's just the way of the world. But anyway, here's your moment of Roger. Sun's up high, Texas sky, cool breeze, flowing wide, solar power on my side, beat the heat, I won't hide. 